The Lord be with you. Welcome home to St. Mark's Pilgrims. We're on the eighth Sunday of Pentecost. Time to take a break and receive the holy food before we go on and continue our pilgrimage. I will go unto the altar of God even the God of my joy and gladness. Lord Jesus Christ, the way by which we travel, show yourself and be in us the life that lifts us up to God, our journey's ending. You, our brother and guide, living and reigning with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We have bread, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands. May it become to us the body of Jesus Christ our Lord. We have wine. May it become to us the precious blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Let us love one another that we may celebrate this holy mystery in peace. A blessing of peace, a sacrifice of praise. Holy thing, for holy people, thanks be to God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, the body of Christ given for us. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the recalling of me. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood, Lord of lords in Spirit. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. May we take and eat these in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, wash me. Jesus, my Savior, dwell in me.
Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ our Lord. In this continuing time of isolation, we are truly sorry. We can't be together in person to commune with you and with the family you've gathered at St. Mark's. Even so, we give you thanks that we can receive you spiritually through the healing power of this gift of life, and through that same Jesus Christ, living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. I want to be clear about something especially in the summertime, when we concentrate on our pilgrimage through this world, its purposes, its difficulties, its joys, using this year the Gospel of Mark. I want to be clear that yes, the messages I'm giving are for us who are committed to be pilgrims in Christ, to follow Christ as his disciples. And if others who are not pilgrims yet are listening in, I wish you God's blessing. The kind of things I'm talking about are for people who have particularly experience in the Christian way but not to exclude you. But what I'm saying is, as St. Paul would say, not just mother's milk now, but the real thing. Well, today we have Jesus saying to his disciples, because the crowds are enormous around him, we have to go to a, a deserted place for rest and for prayer, yes, so that we can continue our ministry with vigor. Here it is. Mark writes, Jesus went about the villages teaching. And you know from last week that this had caught King Herod's attention and he was frightened. Jesus, though, called the twelve, and he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority, as he had, over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, and to wear sandals, and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place won't welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that's on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Then they came back to Jesus and they gathered around him and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, now come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. So they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. 
Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Any follower of Christ, any follower that is worth that name of disciple, works hard. We've been commanded as disciples of Christ to show him to the rest of the world, not to keep him to ourselves. And for so many of us, particularly here in North America, that is a very tall demand. We feel a lot safer if we just keep him to ourselves and to people we know are other Christians. So many of us simply feel scared about that command, go and baptize the whole world. So Lutherans, Anglicans, Presbyterians, United Church, for example, leave that to our Pentecostal or Evangelical brethren and sisters to do. But again, effective as they are, we have our work to do as well. We can't just absolve ourselves because they're doing that hard work of bringing people the good news. So looking at today's reading, how might we who are the frightened ones to bring good news to people who are indifferent, hostile, unbelieving, and want to stay that way. As I've said many times, it seems to me that how we are in the world is the best evangelism for people like us. How we are. I like the way you walk. What have we got here in this gospel passage? Well, clearly, Jesus sends his disciples out. Don't forget who these people were. They were not specially anointed. The Holy Spirit had not come down on him, on them, as the Holy Spirit did at Pentecost. These were followers who so often didn't get who Jesus is. Yet he sends them out with the same power that he has to heal, to dismiss the demons, to tell people that they need to turn around, to repent, to turn again, be different than what they are for their own benefit. These ordinary people he empowers to do exactly that because when they come back, they're amazed at their own powers and they tell him that. What does that say to us as disciples now, today, of Jesus? What it says to me is that we have the same power, those, excuse me, ignorant, original disciples at this point in their lives and ministries had. We need to be open to Christ 
the Holy Spirit, to God the Father. We need to be open to the power and to use it rightly. And again, I say, people notice how we walk. Not so much what we say, which can actually frighten them off, certainly people who are not yet believers, to watch how we walk. All right. He says, travel light. Don't take anything for the journey. You can have a staff because you're going to be on some rough roads. You need the support. But don't take food. Don't take a bag, whatever that might mean. It could be supplies of some sort to get you through. Don't take money. Don't wear fancy shoes. Wear sandals. Travel light. And you know as well as I do what gets in the way of us in particular here, right here in Chesley, in Canada, in North America, is that we aren't traveling light. We can't do it. We've got mortgages. We've got the temptation of nice clothes, nice shoes. We don't travel light. And Jesus is asking us to do that. He's not asking us, by the way, to travel alone. Do you get that? It's not that you have to go all by yourself into some very dangerous territory. No, you go with other people. You have the community support, even if you don't have your family support. And that's something I want to talk about sometime, how those of us who are believers have to deal with families who don't share that belief. But we are not alone. We are well supported. And as Jesus says, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us today our daily bread. That's enough. Not the bread for tomorrow, or the next month, the next year, whatever our great plans are. Give us today our daily bread. That's enough. And that's what he's saying to us. Now he says, whenever you enter a house, which means, of course, you're not in your own house with its mortgage. You're not anchored down. You're traveling light. So you depend on people's goodness and generosity. You're a mendicant, really. Somebody who begs for sustenance. Remember St. Francis? He took that literally and everybody thought he was nuts. But he changed, changed the church, he changed the world in his time. So you be like Francis and you find a place to stay and you stay there as long as you need to. Not to feel that you're imposing on somebody, because that's people like us, the first thing we think about. Oh, don't go into any trouble for us. We've got to get out of here because you're making such a, a fuss over us. We've got to leave. It's really more about us, isn't it, than the generosity of our host, because so often hosts are very happy to host others. It's us and our insecurity that wants us to leave before it's really time. Stability. Jesus is asking for stability among us. So there you are. Stare until you leave the place, until the Holy Spirit tells you it's time to go. Now, how do you like this? If any place won't welcome you and they refuse to hear you, no hospitality, instead hostility. They won't hear you. Well, get out of there. Don't waste your time. And as a matter of fact, shake the dust from your sandals as a testimony. Thank God I'm leaving this godless place of hard-heartedness. 
That goes against our grain, doesn't it? Because we're taught to be nice to everybody, even people are not nice in any way to us. And in one sense, there's hope there. We accept that. That eventually somebody who is hard of heart might have a change of heart, because we have been there, even though they didn't like us at the time we were with them. Yeah, okay. But don't dwell on the folks. Don't waste your time on the folks who are hard-hearted and don't want to repent and don't want to hear what you are saying and don't want to be what you are. Don't waste your time. Move on and don't feel guilty about it. Well, with that command, the 12 accomplish remarkable things. They do what Jesus himself does. And that is to show forth the God who loves, who doesn't give up on us even when we are forced to give up on our neighbors. God doesn't. The love is always there. Hope is always there, and they're astounding. And Jesus wisely says, let's go to a deserted place and recover, recoup our energy. Well, being a missionary, as we all are, can take a lot of energy. And in fact, it doesn't take a lot of energy. We're probably not doing what we're supposed to do, what we're called to do as disciples who call ourselves Christians. So that time apart, don't feel guilty about that. I must say that certainly in the past, some of our greatest missionaries need to hear that, needed to hear that. They were forced to come back out of the field every five years at least to recoup. But then they went back and who knows how much recovery time they really spent. And we encouraged them. They were dying for Christ out there. They left their kids back in schools, residential schools. They left their lives behind. They died in the field. Here's Jesus saying, it's not that way. You are a human being. Take some time. Come apart. Be quiet. Rest. Don't feel guilty. And don't let, you think, let yourself think you're indispensable. This is God's work. You are doing your best. Rest. Even God had a Sabbath. But interesting enough, the crowds press on. He asks the disciples to get in the boat, go to this deserted place. The crowd sees what's happening. They get to the deserted place ahead of time. And there's Jesus and his disciples. They're not going to get the rest. This does happen. His heart is moved. And what does he do? He sees them as sheep without a shepherd. He can't help it. He teaches them many things. And that is also something we're going to have to confront. We may have scheduled time for rest, but guess what? Things get in the way. We'll have to put it off for a while. And that's not a bad thing either. As long as we get to it eventually and don't let ourselves think that we're indispensable. There are just times when the Holy Spirit moves us beyond ourselves and as it did to Jesus, want us, give us the power and the energy to teach many things, however we understand teaching. Think on these things, my brothers and my sisters, pilgrims together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We go on now to say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I couldn't resist it. I came across a setting, a sum setting of the Apostles' Creed, not the Nicene, there are a whole number of those, but the Apostles' Creed coming out of the Dutch Reform tradition. I call them the Dutch Presbyterians. I don't know if they still do that in some places, but I was, I was moved by this, finding uh, their setting. And what I've done is adapted their setting and um, also s shaped it around something called the Misa uh, de Angelis, the Mass of the Angels, that has many echoes in this setting. And I suspect the original setting came from that. So. I thought, I couldn't resist anyway, but I thought it wouldn't be a bad thing if we sang the Apostles' Creed as well as the Nicene. Anyway, here's how it goes. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the for communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Ted is learning the accompaniment for that that I made, and... Uh, for those of us who uh, find unaccompanied singing too austere, uh, in the coming weeks we'll have some accompaniment with it. I hope it is something that's a blessing eventually. I know it's something that's unusual for our tradition, but nonetheless, something about the sung prayers helps them stay in our hearts often forever. Well, we go on with prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We adore you, Father God. We adore you, O Jesus Christ. We adore you, Holy Spirit. We adore you because you are you, holy, mighty, loving, faithful, even to us sinful human beings in this broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the face of your goodness, Holy Trinity, one God, we confess our sinfulness the bad choices we make so often because we think we're you. Forgive us. Forgive us our errors. Teach us humility. Teach us to say, I'm sorry. And more than just saying, I'm sorry to you, to say, I'm sorry to the people we have wronged and then make it up to them. Lord, in your mercy,
mercy? Hear our prayer. God, you have given us the power to intercede for others. We say in Holy Scripture that the prayers of the righteous are of much avail at your throne. And so we offer up to you in our hearts those people, those situations, that are very much part of us right now. And we want you to notice. As part of our intercessions, we remember those who have died. We thank you for their life and witness. And we especially remember two of our congregation this day. We remember Francis, who is moving to a new place now in Mildmay. And we remember our sister, May, who is recovering from her surgery. We ask, Lord, that you bless these sisters as one recovers and the other makes yet a new life for herself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask so much, and so often we forget to say thank you. So here we are now saying thank you. Thank you for all the blessings, the big and the small, the ones that we take for granted and don't even notice. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Now hear us if we pray in the words our Jesus always, our taught us always to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now as we continue our pilgrimage, may the strength of God pilot us, may the power of God preserve us, may the wisdom of God instruct us, may the hand of God protect us, may the way of God direct us, may the shield of God defend us, may the host of God guard us against the snares and temptations of the world. From glory to glory advancing, we praise thee, O Lord. From glory to glory advancing, we praise thee, O Lord. Thy Thanksgiving.
Bless to me, O God, the earth beneath my feet. Bless to me, O God, the path whereon I go. Bless to me, O God, the people whom I meet today, tonight, tomorrow. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 